Welcome back, horror fans, cinephiles, and Jallo enthusiasts. This is Tanner Leeser, your host for all things Jallo here on The King in Jallo. Our next stop on our journey through Jallo cinema is the debut Jallo film from Sergio Martino, The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, released in 1971. This video is an edited down version. Herein, you will find the overview portion of the full length video. Coming next week will be the complete deep dive with the review and Jelly Tally. This video may be watched without any spoilers. Here is The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward Overview. The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward, also called Blade of the Ripper, is an Italian and Spanish co-production. The film is directed by Sergio Martino. The screenplay is written by Vittorio Caronia, Ernesto Gastaldi, and Eduardo Manzanos Brochero. Music is by Nora Orlandi. The cast consists of Edwidge Fenwick as Julie Ward, George Hilton as George Coro, Alberto de Mendoza as Neil Ward, Ivan Rasimov as Jean, Conquita Eoroldi as Carol Brandt, Carlo Alighiero as the Commissioner, and Bruno Corazzari as the Razor Killer. Don't think about it. The movie follows Julie Ward, an unhappily married woman. Her husband Neil is a good man, but he is always away on business, and the loneliness causes Julie to reflect on her past lover, a horribly abusive man named John. John kindled a dark desire within Julie due to his sadistic actions during sex, which created a new kink for Julie related to blood, something which she is both ashamed to admit and explore. John shows up again in her life at the same time that a razor-wielding killer is slaying young women, and Julie fears it is John, and that he will target her next. This movie came together thanks to the producer Luciano Martino after he helped bring the Jello boom to life by producing the 1968 proto-sexy Jello, The Sweet Body of Deborah. He was thrilled to return to produce another Jello to take on the world, one which would combine both the trappings of the sexy Jello with the no-holds-barred violence on display in Argento's body count Jello. The Bird with the Crystal Plumage, 1970. The result is one of the greatest giallo films in the entire canon. Luciano's younger brother, Sergio, directs the film, and although he was relatively new to directing, you would never guess it. This film establishes Sergio Martino as a master of directing sex and violence perfectly in tandem and executing great jumps and thrilling, edge-of-your-seat, nail-biting sequences. The music is one of the most beautifully haunting soundtracks ever. The writing keeps you guessing the whole time, and by the time you get to the climax and think you finally understand everything, the movie pulls out another twist and another. But they never feel forced or contrived. Sergio Martino would keep these elements strong in most all the jelly he would go on to direct. Gastaldi pens one of his best scripts, of course paying respects to Les Diaboliques like always. His character of Julie turns the common character trope of these types of stories on its head and freshens up this wholly new narrative. The acts of sadomasochism and fetishistic bloodletting call back to Gastaldi's previous script seen in Mario Bava's Whip and the Body, 1963. The two films do share a bit in common, but the female characters in each act as opposites. The film was shot on location in Vienna and Spain, adding great beauty to the backdrop of all the mystery. The film seems to have spawned a bit of a feedback loop where he shows that he was inspired by Argento, but Argento would go on to replicate a scene of a murder in a public park in Four Flies on Grey Velvet, 1971, which came out just months later, and the two would seem to continue this trend of sort of copying each other. Martino also infuses elements of Umberto Lenzi and the 1960s Jet Set Swinger Giallo films, but doesn't waste time by following its characters at parties where they seek to find some fun in their lives by being naughty. The film hides its hand by never hinting at its low budget. The casting is expertly done, both in terms of saving money, but also by not tipping the audience off to anything. Martino said that he wanted to avoid casting big names which would have cost more money, would have relegated the film to just another vehicle for that star, and that would suggest what was going to happen to the audience because of the record of the characters that some of these actors have already played for years, chiefly Carol Baker and Jean Sorel. These actors cost more, 
Carol Baker starring would have made this a Carol Baker Jallo, and casting John Sorrell would have incriminated his character and thus spoiled the reveal at the end because everyone has just come to get used to Sorrell being cast as the handsome schemer. Despite the cast in this movie costing a fraction of the budget they could have, the stars herein are top shelf, as demonstrated by the careers they would go on to create. Pieces of Nora Orlandi's amazing score would be taken by Tarantino and used in Kill Bill Volume 2, 2004. That woman deserves her revenge. And we deserve to die. I personally do like Tarantino, but in retrospect, I hate that he repurposes so many tracks from Jallo films to the point that laymen don't really know where they actually are from. It's a minor complaint. Edwidge Fennick is in her first Jello where she stars. She had lent an air of sexiness to her previous roles in Top Sensation, 1969, and Five Dolls for an August Moon, 1970. Fennec has the prowess of being able to say yes to an abundance of scenes where she is wearing her birthday suit, but not be viewed as only being cast as utilized for her good looks alone. This film in particular dispels any doubts and proves that she is wonderfully gifted as an actor. The three men are superbly cast as well, each one brings a new shade to the ensemble. Ivan Rasimov being the dark and violent one, George Hilton being the ambiguous one who could be hiding more than he lets on, or not, and Alberto de Mendoza who perfectly plays the noble yet stubborn husband. Fun facts, the strange spelling of the name Ward being W-A-R-D-H is because a widow with the surname of Ward, spelled W-A-R-D, either implored Sergio Martino to change the name or had threatened legal action if he didn't. In any case, the name was modified just in case anybody was thinking of terrorizing this poor widow with defamatory accusations, which nobody was. But I digress. Thank you for watching this overview only video. Don't miss the full overview, review, and jelly tally for The Strange Vice of Mrs. Ward next week. As of right now, you can find the movie streaming on Tubi, Sling TV, Amazon Prime Video, AMC Plus, the Roku Channel, Shudder, and can be viewed entirely for free on YouTube. Don't forget to like this video and join me next week to see the rest of this review. Comment your predictions for the AZ score for the movie and the final Jally Tally score, and then let's see how well you did. Give The King and Jallo a follow on Instagram and a like on Facebook. Don't forget to like this video and join me next week to see the rest of this review.